Hello friends, uh, today we are taking up on the chapter from Indian Economic Survey and the chapter's name is Reforming the Fertilizer Sector. Since 2014, the important reforms have been implemented in the fertilizer sector. These include the new coating of area, uh, urea, uh, which is likely to reduce the diversion of fertilizer meant for Indian farmers and gas fooding which should increase the efficiency of domestic urea production. Now let us understand first that what is neem coating of urea and how it will prevent the diversion of urea meant for Indian farmers to the chemical sector and what is gas pouring. The diversion of urea to the chemical factories by unscrupulous operators had long haunted the fund for farmers in the country. So what government of India did, they tweaked the chemical composition of this essential fertilizer by coating it with neem in such a way that it is rendered useless for the factory owners and provides the extra nutrition to the soil in the fields. Coating urea with neem prevents its misuse and as well as its uh, puts the fertilizer in a slow release mode thereby nourishing the sapling for a longer period and thus avoiding the repeated use of fertilizer. The process reduces the pollution of groundwater as well. There is an increase in the crop yield and efficient pest control management leading to the savings. It also increases the shelf life of the product. What is gas pooling then? The cost of gas which is the most important component for production of urea. It varies from plant to plant owing to differential rate at which imported LNG liquefied natural gas is contracted and as well as cost of transportation. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs CCEA, that has approved averaging of different rates of domestic and imported gas to ensure the supply of fuel to all urea plants at a uniform delivery cost. This would help in focusing the uh, improving of plant efficiency and may help in price advantage in sourcing of LNG. So moving on. Both these steps that is neem coating of urea and gas boiling, it should help small farmers by improving their access to low cost fertilizer. They will also be provided uh, you know they will provide the good building blocks for uh, further fertilizer sector reforms which are needed. This chapter of Indian Economic Survey, this explores what the next reforms step should be. But therefore, before moving to the reform agenda, we must first understand the long-standing features of the first fertilizer sectors that induce the major distortion which needed to be corrected. The government budgeted almost 73,000 crores, which is about almost 0.5% of the GDP on fertilizer subsidies in year 2015 and 16. Nearly 70% of this amount was allocated to urea alone, the most commonly used fertilizer, making it the largest subsidy after food. The amount of subsidy which India Indian government provided on food is only largest uh, first to the urea otherwise the subsidy on urea is the second largest subsidy provided by government of india distortion in urea are the results of multiple regulations first there are a, there are a large subsidies based on end use only agricultural urea is subsidized which creates incentives to divert this subsidized urea to the industry and across the border. They do its uh, smuggling, the agricultural uh, urea which was bound to, uh, you know, which was meant to provide it to the farmers is actually being diverted to the factories for the chemical purpose. In fact, subsidized urea suffers from following leakages. First, 24% is spent on the inefficient urea producers. We will understand this point in later slides and of the remaining after deducting 24% from the 100% urea 41% is diverted to the non-agricultural use and abroad in the form of uh, smuggling.
and of the remaining 24 percent is consumed by the larger presumably the richer farmer and hence thereby the small farmer is thereby not having its full users these leakages imply that only 35 percent that is around 17500 crores of the total urea subsidy is actually reaches to the intended beneficiaries which are small and marginal farmers second under pricing of urea relative to other fertilizers that is uh, p and k the this is the basket of our fertilizers we used uh, uh, in our indian agricultural sector so leaving urea behind p and k encourages overuse because the price the uh, price of urea is underpriced so urea is being utilized more than what is required and which also results in significant environmental externalities and including the depleted soil quality now let's understand the basic facts about the fertilizer sector there are three basic types of fertilizer used the urea diammonium phosphate and muriate of potash the in many ways uh, the urea this dominates the fertilizer sector of all the fertilizers it is the most produced that is almost 86 percent of the fertilizers 86 percent is urea and most imported as well around 52 percent of the fertilizers urea constitutes the 54 percent of this basket and it also face the most government intervention urea is most physically controlled fertilizer as well with 50 percent under the fertilizer ministry's movement control order compared with 20 percent for dap and only 20 percent for mop it also receives the largest subsidies as well in outlay terms accounting accounting to almost around 70 percent of the total fertilizer subsidy and uh, the proportion of actual cost of production almost 75 percent per kg compared with the about 35 percent for the dap and mop the government interventions in urea and dap or mop differ not just in scale but also in kind what happens dap and mop the the producers of these uh, commodities and importers receives a nutrition based subsidy based on the formula that determines that how much amount of n p and k is given in the amount of fertilizer per kilogram subsidy on dap and mop fertilizers are hence fixed they do not vary with the market prices because subsidies on these fertilizers are based upon the nutrition based subsidy the, now imports of dap and mop are also not controlled the prices farmers faces are thus deregulated market price adjusted by the fixed nutrient subsidy government involvement in dap and mop is limited to a to paying producers and importers a fixed nutrition based subsidy which works out to be largely 35 percent of the total cost production but the case of urea is very different the government intervenes in the sector in five ways it sets a controlled maximum retail price the mrp at which urea must be sold to farmers this price is almost currently rupees 5360 per metric ton which is actually uh, to uh, 68 rupees per kilogram of the bag this control price turns out to be one third of the con current imported price which stands around rupees 18600 per ton per ton that means 18600 rupees per ton and what they are providing it they are providing it for rupees 5360 
It also provides a subsidy to 30 domestic producers only and this subsidy is firm specific. And this subsidy is provided to these producers on cost plus basis. That means that more inefficient producers get larger subsidies because larger the cost, larger is the sub subsidy. Therefore, the producer is not inclined towards raising its efficiency cost wise because in that order it will lose a share of subsidy because the cost is less since government is providing the cost. Uh, the subsidy on the larger cost so those they remain in efficient third it provides a subsidy to the importers that is consignment specific and imports are canalized that means only three agencies are allowed to import urea into india finally about half of the movement of fertilizers is directed that is the government tells manufacturers and importers that how much import and how much to import, aap kitna import kar sakte hain aur aap apna urea kahan bech sakte hain, kisko bech sakte hain and where to sell their urea. Thus, nearly all sectors, consumers, producers, importers and even distributors, they all are controlled in the case of urea. These distortions feed upon each other and together creates an environment that leads to a series of adverse outcomes which we describe now. Leakage one is black market. Urea is only subsidized for agricultural use. So 75% subsidy on agricultural urea that creates a large piece wedge between the normal market price of urea and agricultural urea. So it feeds a black market, thriving black market, diverting urea to the industry and possibly across to the border of Bangladesh and Nepal. For example, subsidized urea, the market price of urea is rupees 100 and subsidized urea is rupees 25 only. So there is a gap of rupees 75. So obviously the black marketeers will look after to procure the agricultural urea and uh, thereby we are there is a huge subsidy loss just because of this huge, uh, you know, urea subsidized price. The leakage number one. Uh, was black market then leakage number two is small farmers inability to derive full benefits how come this black market that hurts smalls and marginal farmers more than large farmers since a higher percentage of these large farmers are uh, sorry of these small farmers is forced to buy urea from the black market why because large farmers are connected well to the urea outlets and they are well connected people so they are having the means to procure the urea on the subsidized price whereas small farmers are lacking that uh, ability so they are bound to purchase their uses of urea from black market which is at the higher price than the subsidized urea which is available on the government outlets. This regressive nature is the characteristics of uh, black market rationing and happens because large farmers are typically, as I told you, better connected and therefore able to secure scarce, scarce, uh, secure the uh, subsidized urea. The third leakage in the Indian urea, sect uh, urea sector is inefficient fertilizer manufacturers. As I told you earlier in the last slide, the, this third source of urea leakage arises from some of the urea subsidy going to the sustaining in inefficient domestic production instead of going to the small farmers. What happens? Uh, there are 30 manufacturing units with varying level of efficiency. This has led to a model where subsidy, the subsidy uh, a firm which a firm receives is based on its cost of production. So, the greater is the cost, the larger is the subsidy. As a consequence, the inefficient firms with high production cost, they survive and the incentive to lower the cost to increase their efficiency, therefore, it is followed. Now, externalities of urea price, this also worsens the soil quality. Urea ka jab hum overuse karte the overuse of urea which leads to determinant of the soil. 
agricultural scientist recommended that for Indian conditions, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium should be at a ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 1 and pk but since urea is highly subsidized which is a source for nitrogen in our case so that is we tend to the overuse of indian farmer tend to use overuse the urea and thereby in turn depleting the health of its own, his own soil now what are the reforms required a reform package would address each of the problem identified previously the three leakage and the skewed mix of this fertilizer use with the primary aim of benefiting the small farmer first what we need to do is to decentralize the urea imports which what this will do this will increase the number of importers and allow greater freedom in import decisions that what how much to import where to impro, import where to sell now this would allow the fertilizer supply to respond flexibly and quickly to the changes in the market or in the demand then according to the need of market and according to the demand only the urea imports will be taken care second bringing urea under the nutrient based subsidy program like our uh, p and k substance of total npk basket currently the prior in place for dap and mop this would allow domestic producers to continue receiving fixed subsidies based on nutritional content of their fertilizers while deregulating the market would allow the domestic producers to charge the market price this would encourage the fertilizers manufacturer fertilizer manufacturers to be efficient as they could then earn greater profits by reducing the cost and improving the urea quality and this it would uh, in turn with uh, will benefit the farmers farmers now turning fertilizers in jam jandhanman aadhar and mobile the case for implementing direct transfers in fertilizers uh, is to reduce the leakage to the black market the government's policy of neem coating urea is a step exactly in the, that direction only so neem coating makes it more difficult for black marketers to divert urea to the industrial consumers neem coating also benefits the farmers by reducing as we learned earlier by reducing the nitrogen losses from the soil by providing greater nutrient to the crop as a result farmers need less urea to achieve the same effect so fertilizer is a good sector to pursue jam because of the key similarity as jam was very much uh, successful in the lpg experience so this can also be experimented in case of urea now ideally fertilizer subsidies would be targeted only at a small and marginal farmer but targeting the poor is a difficult at the best of the times at most of the times why actually assessing the poverty based on land holdings or some other measure it is a difficult task and along with this a second problem emerges with targeting the tenant farmers and sharecroppers because a large number of people in India is actually the tenant farmers or who share the batai par jo log kaam karte hain. The situational assessment survey of agricultural households reveals that a little over of 10% of all the farmers are tilling someone else's land and cash transfer design should be careful if we want to uh, take them under the DBT then it should take care of that these typically landless farmers should not be excluded because they are in more need of this subsidy. The relatively low levels of last mile financial inclusion of much of the rural India, this also suggests that it would be risky to replace subsidized fertilizer with cash subsidy due to uh, this beneficiaries because our farmers are weakly connected to the banking system. 
the last one is universal subsidy on with the cap of number on bags ki aap itne number of bags to le sakte hain with subsidized price and for rest you have to pay like we did in the apna uh, our this uh, lpg cylinders <coughs> so the preferred option would be to set a cap on the number of subsidized bags which each household can purchase and require it in this biometric authentication should be made compulsory at the point of sale this is the approach adopted for kerosene and food in state of andhra pradesh but requiring biometric authentication would make it harder to conduct large scale diversions imposing a cap on the total number of subsidized bag each farmer can purchase would also improve the targeting small farmers would still be able to get all their urea at subsidized prices because small farmers are having small land holdings so the lesser amount of urea is required but the large farmers having the large farm holdings on the other hand may have to pay market price for some of the urea that they buy a number of states like uh, andhra pradesh and gujarat and uh, uh, these two states are having higher aadhar penetration so Uh, the point on sale devices for biometric uh, uh, identification and this uh, uh, number of cap wala system should be you know uh, applied and first tested in these states and these states you know they present to be a, uh, themselves as a good candidate to spa, start these pilot uh, projects based on this model so that is it for uh, this session and here we completed the chapter the reform in fertilizer sector of india and we will be coming soon with another lecture on indian economic survey till then thank you for watching and do visit our website at www.decipheris.com till then goodbye and take